my use of apps and the way that I use my Mac changes from time to time. But I just want to give a quick overview of how I'm using my Mac at the moment because um, I find that when I use other people's machines, I set up differently. And when people use mine, I expect them to be able to be productive, but they're not. And so I just want to give a quick overview about how I organize my MacBook Pro. So first of all, I use spaces to have six virtual desktops. I used to have more than this, but then and, and less, but six seems to suit me quite well. So on this desktop, I have my web browser. Um, on this one, I have anything to do with audio. So I have Spotify and um, iTunes and that type of thing. On this one, I have anything to do with communication. So I have things like um, iChat and I have um, Skype on there as well. On this one, that's where I use file browsers. So if I need anything in Finder, that's where I, I use that. This middle one is for things like if I'm doing anything in iMovie or in Keynote. Keynote I usually pull that across there and, and use Keynote or Seashore, which is my image um, kind of manipulator, Photoshop, that type of thing. Anything kind of creative, I suppose, goes in there. And then this bottom left-hand window is reserved for TweetDeck. And usually it's over there and, and kind of full screen, but that's my DM window on the left-hand side. I don't think it's fair to, to share those with people. So I have um, mentions. These change all the time, I suppose, because I've kind of got um, I scroll to from right to left as well. So these change all the time, depending on which conferences I'm going to and everything like that. But I make sure that I have my DMs on the left-hand side, mentions of my DAJ Belcher account, um, and then I have either then just general all friends, or I put mentions of DAJB conf, which is my conference account, and um, purpose education, which is the um, kind of social uh, enterprise that I'm running with, with Andy. So that's how, how I run that. The other kind of little apps uh, that I'm using, um, as of literally today, I'm using Cloud App, which I came across on Lifehacker a few months ago, but I didn't really use. So the idea behind this is you can just literally drag and drop from your desktop. Another thing about my desktop, I, I make the icons as big as possible. So if you go to View, and if you go to Show View Options, um, oh, it's gone, come on. Show View Options, anyway, you make the icons as big as possible. That means that you, when you get to a full desktop, you're kind of forced to, to sort things out in some way. Otherwise, like everyone else, you get cluttered desktop. Um, no, but this thing here, Cloud App, you can just drag and drop things into there, and it, it uploads it and then shares it as a URL. So, if, for example, these are my notes from the OER 11 event. If I drag that onto Cloud App, you can see that it's, it's kind of, well, if I zoom in on there, it's doing a little thing that says uploading, and it has a little ding there, the little blue things come up, and Growl said that it's uploaded, and there it is. If I click on there, then that is a link that I can share with people on Twitter and social networks and everything like that. And people can then go to it and download it. And you can upload 10 things per day and up to 25 megs for free. And then you can upgrade for however much it is and you know, unlimited stuff. I was using Gmail Notifier. I'm now using this, which is, oh, what's it called? Um, mail tab for Gmail. That's on the Mac App Store. So you get things like that. That just goes through your Gmail interface. Quite nice. Skype. Last FM, this I can't get rid of, it's when I used to use Parallels, Dropbox. This is Peer Guardian that blocks um, ads and uh, people spying on you, um, that type of thing. Evernote, I don't use as much as I used to, but when I did, I used that. Um, that is for, oh, something to do with Apple Mobile Me, something like that. This one here, oh, I've got the Spring Beach Ball of Death. This one here is um, uh, VPN, so I use iPredator when I don't want, um, well, I don't like BT particularly, and I don't like them tracking what I do, so I try to turn that on off as much as I can, actually, because that means everything's encrypted between me, um, and it's actually the people behind the Pirate Bay who run that, and so they're completely kind of secret, and not that I've taken anything to hide, but, you know, I don't like people snooping on me. This thing, which is on the screen now, is called uh, Liquorize, and when it was an offer, I bought a lifetime license. It's really nice because you can you can put bookmarks into projects. You can see here I've got my research on OER and mobile learning, that type of thing, um, which means that you can create little booklets. So let me just show you that. Um, if I go to uh, found, which is my random kind of thing for things I find interesting, I click on see projects booklet. You can access this from uh, dougbelcher.com forward slash research as well. It creates a nice little booklet. Of, of links with little screenshots from the things that I've, I've bookmarked recently and you can click on here and it um, sorts them out by kind of a, in a list and that's quite nice. 
Um, what else? Ooh, um, these things I've done on the side. Oh, this browser is called Rockmelt. It's a it's based on Google Chrome, um, and it, it's got kind of Facebook built into it. So these are contacts, friends, and family. But the thing which I really like is down the right hand side, it organizes all of your extensions as buttons. So I use Instapaper quite a lot. Uh, I save things for reading later, and it automatically goes to my Kindle. And um, when it gets to five items, it automatically sends it. Um, I add things to Liquorize like that, and sometimes it goes a bit crazy. Um, I use Feedly. Feedly is really nice. It's a it's kind of a magazine front end for for Google Reader, so I use that quite a lot. Um, my broadband's quite slow. What else? Oh, Amplify is really nice. So I don't know. Let's go to some fantastic blog like oh this one. And what you do is you click on Amplify. And a little thing comes up, click this page, and you can basically blog about a page. So you click on the bits that you want to include, and then you can add a comment at the top of that one. And the way that I'm using that is that I've got this thing called an ideas garden. Um, and what happens here, oh, the other thing is, you've got to try this out. It's ifttt.com, so it stands for if this, then that. Um, and you can get an invite quite easily. So let me just sign into to this and let me just show you some of the things. So you set up rules of, of things like if this happens, then then do this. Um, oh, this is LastPass, by the way, this thing which is logging me in automatically. You have one master password and then it logs you into everything automatically. And I have big, long, secure, kind of 12 character passwords which get you um, fairly secure. So I don't actually know my passwords to various things, but LastPass does and it logs me in automatically when I put my master password in. Um, so you can see here, I've got various tasks. So this one here, for example, if I favorite something on, where is it? If I add something to Delicious, add it to my ideas garden. If I add something to Flickr, add it to my ideas garden, that type of thing. <coughs> so excuse me, this um, ideas garden just fills up automatically with the things that I add to um, Twitter and everything like that. And then what I do is I go back to it now and again, and I click on something that I find interesting. Uh, click on it and then I look at what it is and I read it and then I amplify it. And if I amplify it, it means I can add my thoughts to it and make people aware of it because what Amplify does is it automatically tweets it out if I wanted to. I can add it to um, Delicious if I haven't already bookmarked it, that type of thing. So it's a really nice workflow and it's a really nice way of doing things. Um, then the other thing is explain and send screenshots. So quite a lot of the time, instead of just writing what I mean when I want to tell someone something, um, I click on explain and send screenshots and I can um, grab the entire page for example and then I'll capture it and I can write and draw arrows and do everything like that which is quite nice. There's something called Glass, I think it's called writeonglass.com oh, come on. Yeah, writeonglass.com which is supposed to do something similar but I find exp explain and send screenshots is a lot better. Um, and that is pretty much it in terms of things I've been using recently and things I've come across which are useful. Um, my Mac tools and the iPad, perhaps I'll do some on the iPad later. Uh, but yeah, the big finds at the moment are um, this thing, Cloud App, um, this one, I've forgotten again, Mail Tab for Gmail, um, Rock Melt, as in the browser, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Liquorize, really, you should start using Liquorize, and, and if then if that, then this. So that is me using my MacBook at the moment.